from downtown Lexington, Kentucky, and inside Rupp Arena. We welcome you to the SEC on ESPN. Today, the sixth-ranked Wildcats welcome Bruce Pearl and Auburn to town as Kentucky looks to improve on a perfect start in conference play. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart, Kara Lawson, Kaylee Hartung is along as well. This Kentucky team off to another great SEC start for John Calipari's squad. The headliners are the backcourt players. The guy very rarely loses at Rupp Arena, but Kara, you think that there's a guy on the floor that's more important than the three superstars. Well, there's no question that the Aaron Fox and Malik Monk are off to one of the best starts for a freshman backcourt in college basketball history. But for my money, the most important player on this team, that's Bam Adebayo. And he's a guy that has to have tremendous production on both ends of the floor. When he goes off the floor, Kentucky's just not the same. The drop-off between him and the rest of the posts on the, ro on the roster, it's severe from a productivity and a readiness standpoint. It's a very young Kentucky team. It's a very young Southeastern Conference as a whole, but as Kaylee tells us, they're not the only young team on the floor today. Well, Tom, Auburn's second only to Kentucky in terms of how much production they are getting out of their freshmen. Four of Auburn's top five scores are freshmen. Bruce Pearl says this is the youngest team he's ever coached. And although last year's Auburn team actually beat Kentucky, he says this is the most talented team he's had in his three seasons at Auburn. But this young and talented team missing a key piece in redshirt freshman Daniel Purifoy today. He's out for his second game in a row after spraining a left ankle last weekend against Ole Miss. He's back home in Auburn, progressing better than folks expected. You will see a smaller lineup than we're used to from the Tigers today. All right, Kaylee, thanks. Yeah, indeed, they'll start T.J. Lang at the four spot. Inside, speaking of young, is Austin Wiley. He jumps center with Adebayo. Wiley should be a high school senior right now. That is taking early enrollee to the extremes. Auburn wins a tip there in the road orange. Kentucky in their home white, where they have won 49 of 51 matchups all time with Auburn. Mustafa Heron with a nice look inside to Wiley. And the freshman from Hoover, Alabama, has Auburn on the board. Well, great job from Auburn. And what did we see? What Bruce Pearl talked about, attacking Bam Adebayo off of those ball screen actions. They get Wiley a nice little bunny to start the game. Isaiah Briscoe bumped coming around the handoff by Lang. And Adebayo in on Wiley. Wiley's at 6'11". Good two-man game here. Back out to Fox. And the lefty leaves it short, but an offensive rebound. Here's Malik Monk. Gabriel will put up a three. Not the guy you'd expect, but he knocks down his first. And De'Aaron Fox is going to pick up Jared Harper full court. Tempo will be a question throughout this game today. Auburn and Kentucky, two of the fastest teams in the SEC. Bruce Pearl told us today, pressing is our strength, but we can't press Kentucky. I don't know if there's many teams in the country that can pre press Kentucky because of the speed and the ball handling ability of De'Aaron Fox. DJ Dunham's into the oh. paint. That one swatted all the way out towards midcourt. It came with two on the shot clock, and Gabriel's had an impact already in the first 90 seconds. And the athleticism, a great job by Wendy and Gabriel on the help side, just cleaning it up. And you got to go into the paint with a plan against Kentucky. You can't go up there without a plan. I mean, Adebayo and Gabriel, they're going to send it back your way if you come in there without a plan. Lang banks it in to beat the shot clock, and they're going to take a look at it. Terry Oglesby says, did he get it off in time? They only had two on the clock on the inbounds. Monk does a good job there forcing him to take that shot fake because you know it's short clock and it looks like he got it off. With time to spare. Oh, yeah. No surprise that Lang would shoot it. 89% of his attempts have come from behind the arc. You know, it was interesting in talking to Bruce Pearl this morning. He said if T.J. Lang could come out and hit a couple threes, that would be that would be big for us offensively. And I don't know if it, he thought it would be that way off the glass, but they'll take it. Adebayo using his muscle inside. Jump hook way too high and strong. And here's a run out for Jared Harper. Numbers for the men in orange. And a missed opportunity for Dunnins. Kentucky will push it the other way. Monk transition three. Got it. And a whistle. 
Basket will count. We got a foul after the ball was in the air. It came on a push off from Adebayo. It's his first personal. Cannot miss opportunities. Cannot miss opportunities if you're Auburn. All right, Kentucky doesn't just intercept the ball. They go pick six. Every single time that you make a mistake in transition when you have numbers, they come back, they make you pay. And Kentucky does with Malik Monk right there. Harper had it by Fox again immediately on the inbounds. Two great young guards in the SEC. Harper beats him with the left. Yeah, he's not afraid. I mean, Jared Harper, if this is your first time getting a chance to see him play, he's small, but he's got a ton of poise. And again, you see how quickly De'Aaron Fox can come right back at you. Kentucky is sixth in the nation in time of possession. And De'Aaron Fox takes it coast to coast to put Kentucky back in front. Hot start for Auburn. They've hit three of four. Dunnans got way under the basket. It ends up in Wiley's hands. He has four early. And then a bump in transition. Here's De'Aaron Fox doing what he does best. So the last two possessions, this has happened for Auburn. First, it was Harper. Harper shoots the layup. So automatically, he's going to be behind the eight ball in terms of transition defense. Somebody has to stop the basketball. Not reach, but get in front, cut it off. And right there, Wiley, he dunks it. Adebayo gets a head start in transition. No one picks up Adebayo for him, and as a result, T.J. Lang fouls. And T.J. Dunnage with the foul there. That's his first and a second on Auburn. You know, communication is always important in transition defense, Tom, but it's even more paramount when you play Kentucky because there's less time to spare in transition. They get it up so quickly. Gabriel has his shot redirected, follows it, fights for it again. Gabriel with another offensive board. He gets tied up, and we've got a jump ball. It'll stay this direction with Kentucky. Briscoe. Nope. Gabriel's there again, and then he just collapsed. Gabriel... A little banged up inside. Another offensive rebound. This time it's Briscoe. Malik Monk off the window. Already five offensive rebounds for Kentucky. And we're less than four minutes in. Five offensive rebounds on seven missed shots. Sledding's tough for Dunnins early. Second turnover. Into traffic, taken away by Jared Harper. And a whistle on the drive by Harper. So we've got a break in the action. Two teams red hot from the floor. Auburn at 67% to start this game. Meanwhile, Kentucky has missed seven shots, but they got five offensive rebounds off of it. And it's an early lead for the sixth-ranked Cats. And we welcome those of you who just watched North Carolina knock off Florida State here in SEC matchup, the sixth-ranked Wildcats meeting Auburn for the 110th time in their history. Tom Hart, Carol Osh, and Kaylee Hartung along as well. John Calipari has a young, young team, and everyone focuses on their backcourt, Kara, but you think the most impactful and important player is the guy on the inside. I do. There's no question De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk have had a tremendous start to their college basketball careers, perhaps one of the best freshman backcourts in college basketball history. The most important player on this team, though, is freshman Bam Adebayo. He is the guy that's the pivotal piece on both ends of the floor. When he goes off, there is a gap, and it is severe between him and the rest of the posts in the offense from a productivity standpoint standpoint and from a readiness standpoint so I look for Bam on a bio to continue to grow and really put his mark on this team growth is the key word for this entire league the SEC is the youngest league in all of college basketball it's not just this fantastic Kentucky recruiting class Bruce Pearl has one of his own and for more of that let's go across the court to Kaylee Hartung yeah, 
Tom. Auburn second only to Kentucky in terms of how much production they are getting out of their freshmen. Four of their top five scorers are freshmen. Bruce Pearl says this is the youngest team he's ever coached, but he also believes it's the most talented team that he's had at Auburn, but they're missing an important young and talented piece of it today in redshirt freshman Daniel Purifoy. He's out for the second straight game after spraining an ankle last weekend at Ole Miss. He's back home at Auburn, rehabbing, progressing better than they expected, but as we've already seen on the court for Auburn today, a smaller lineup than we're used to out of them. All right, Kaylee, thank you. Smaller and T.J. Lang getting the start at the four, and he's already banked in a three today. This is Rupp Arena, downtown Lexington, Kentucky, where these Wildcats have won 90% of their games. In 51 meetings with Auburn, they've only lost, so pardon me, 48 meetings, they've only lost twice. One of them when, is when they were number one when Sonny Smith and Auburn knocked off Rex Chapman and that great Kentucky team. And two head coaches with strong personalities and a long history. Bruce Pearl, obviously, before Auburn was at Tennessee. Roughly the same time John Calipari was building his program at Memphis. Pearl, after Cal moved on to Kentucky, had success against him there, and he was at Tennessee. Nice back cut by Mustafa Heron. The freshman has a bucket. Auburn came into this game averaging 79 points a game, 12th in the country in tempo. They haven't shied away from pushing it at times here in the early going. Well, I think they have to be opportunistic with their, their pushing the basketball. You, you cannot run and try and play the whole speed that Kentucky plays at for the entire game. But you look to push early, get some good shots. Now, the downside for Auburn of playing small is on the glass. Kentucky already was six offensive rebounds, so that's something to watch. They've got to find a way to make Kentucky one and done here. John Calipari has yet to go to his bench in this one. Already Bruce Pearl has brought in Bryce Brown and LaRon Smith. And they harass Adebayo into a turnover. Second turnover for the Cats. 5'10 freshman Jared Harper runs the point for Auburn. This is a basketball game and a pair of rosters that have a lot of eyeballs on them. This is such a big game, Tom, not just for the SEC race, but also in terms of these guys' futures. Five NBA GMs, 13 NBA scouts in the building, so a lot of eyes on these young teams, as Kaylee talked about at the top. Anthony McLemore off the bench. He's got a follow-up bucket there, and Auburn has a three-point lead. Gabriel has already hit one three, and he hits another. He started the game with a triple. Here's a guy only shooting 20% from deep. Harper with a burst of speed, and he nearly turned it over. This is a fun matchup. Heron guarded by Briscoe. Pull up from the lefty. And the freshman can't knock it down. McLemore commits his first personal. Isaac Humphreys off the bench for Kentucky. Adebayo will get a breather. He has yet to score in this one. So this is now the stretch to watch if you're Kentucky. And, you know, when Bam Adebayo throughout the course of the season has gone to the bench, Kentucky hasn't fared well in terms of the plus minus. And you see Fox with a nice drive off of that pick by Humphrey. So how do they play? Are they able to, to keep things above water here with Bam on the bench? Ronnie Johnson just checked in to transfer from Houston, and Auburn turns it over immediately. Then Briscoe. Got tripped in the open floor, apparently, by Mustafa Heron. It's the first on Heron. Got another great big Monday doubleheader for you at ESPN. We start in the ACC with North Carolina hosting Syracuse at 7 Eastern. Then at 9 p.m., Kansas squares off with Iowa State. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Big win for North Carolina. They got Theo Pinson back. Got him back last week, and they are able to get the win at home this afternoon against Florida State. No question that's a big win, and without Bradley in the lineup, which I thought might, might be an issue uh, with the size of Florida State. But great win for Roy Williams in the Tar Heels. And Malik Monk, he's just keeps doing what he's been doing, and that's shooting the ball with tremendous efficiency from beyond the arc. He's looking to become only the fourth freshman in SEC history to lead the league in scoring. The last to do it was Chris Jackson of LSU. It's the largest lead of the game for the Cats. They're up five. Johnson rejected by Gabriel his second block and now Fox off and running for Kentucky followed jam by Humphreys seven points Kentucky lead
Shot clock in single digits. Dunnins flies down the lane uncontested. That ends a 10-0 Kentucky run. Fox the lob. Humphreys another finish. I mean, the Aaron Fox can get wherever he wants on the basketball floor right now. This game changed when Jared Harper left the game for Auburn. They turned the point guard position over to Ronnie Johnson. Lang, open from the wing. You know, it's always a hard decision, especially for Bruce Pearl, because, you know, Jared Harper gives you, obviously, your best shot to win. But with this pace, he can't play 40 minutes. But I, I think maybe you go another possession, if that, and you might have to get him back in the ballgame, because Darren Fox, he's smelling blood right now. Pushing it again, this time out to Monk. Nice Skip pass. pass, Briscoe, yeah. got it! Kentucky rolling! Isaiah Briscoe knocks down a three. Timeout, Bruce Pearl in Auburn. This is so pretty. I mean, this is just beautiful basketball from Kentucky. I mean, the way they're playing at such a high level on both ends of the floor. Remarkable play there by Monk with the cross court pass. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the $10 Any Pizza Carryout Deal. Only at Pizza Hut. Welcome back inside Rupp Arena, another packed house for this Kentucky team, ranked sixth in the country. This is the SEC on ESPN. Kentucky undefeated in conference play, 4-0 thus far. Auburn 1-3 coming off of a last-second win Tuesday night at Missouri. This is some Kentucky fans that, uh, well, they're just so used to winning that you can snooze through the first eight minutes, I suppose. <laughs> Others are more inclined to show their support throughout the game. Kentucky 50% from two. They've hit five of seven from deep. They only made one three in their last game. This is not a great perimeter shooting Kentucky team, but then again, that might be a little nitpicky because they are one of the best teams in all of college basketball. No question, one of the best offensive teams. We see Bruce Pearl at that timeout. Smartly goes back to Jared Harper at the point guard position, trying not to let this get any way away any more than it has. And there you go, right on cue, the young freshman. Dominic Hawkins has entered the game for Kentucky, as has Derek Willis. So Briscoe and Monk, the only Kentucky starters on the floor right now for John Calipari. Humphreys in the paint. And Carl Hess says he walked with it. Third turnover for the Cats. They do not turn the ball over. That's what's amazing about the pace of play with which John Calipari's team runs. They only turn it over ten times a game. And with with, with the young players they have. Yes. I mean, you add all those. You add all those ingredients. That's what makes it makes it spectacular. Isaiah Briscoe. Takes the offensive foul on the bump from Heron. The foul is on Heron. That's his first and it's his sixth. Isaiah Briscoe running the point right now for Kentucky. With some colorful sneakers on, by the way. And he's got a colorful <laughs> personality. A strong one to help lead this team. He does, you know. And, and he's he's taken on some of the lead guard when, when De'Aaron Fox is, is out of the basketball game. In fact, in their win against Vanderbilt, both De'Aaron Fox and Malik Monk picked up two early fouls. And Isaiah Briscoe had to man the point guard position for a, a lot of the game and has done a nice job. I mean, here's a guy that has improved a ton from his freshman to sophomore campaign, not just his efficiency. You see his assist to turnover ratio there, 4.8 to 1. I mean, that's that's insane. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that gets after it defensively as well. We've got a jump ball. Possession arrow will stay with Auburn. For more on Isaiah Briscoe, let's check in with Kaylee. Well, Tom, this uh, Cats team had to practice early on Thursday morning so Cal could get on the road recruiting. And when Cal walked in at 7.25 a.m., the guys were all clapping at him like he was late <laughs> because Isaiah Briscoe had them ready to go. Cal said it was a great practice and it really proved something to him about Briscoe's leadership. Well, Briscoe was one of the last two guys off the floor yesterday. They've been making Darren Fox stay late to work on his jumper. And he wasn't alone. Briscoe was there working with him alongside assistant coach Kenny Payne. 
Wiley, the freshman, got knocked off balance and still converted. He has six. Yeah, he's a nice looking prospect, isn't he? Yes. I mean, he's he's been in in the program for less than a month, so still learning the college game. Fox lost it into Gabriel's hands, and he's able to draw the foul on Austin Wiley. It will be the first on Wiley, and that will put Wenyan Gabriel at the free throw line. Wenyan Gabriel is one of those guys on this team that's overlooked when you talk about the other stars, a freshman from Manchester, New Hampshire. For more, Kaylee, let's check in with you. Well, Tom, tattooed on Wenyan Gabriel's wrist, wipe your tears, because that's the translation of the name Wenyan in Dinka, the language of his native tribe in South Sudan. Now, a year before Gabriel was born, his mother birthed the family's fourth child. She died in infancy, and Wenyan's birth was an opportunity for the family to wipe away the tears from those moments of heartbreak following her death. And Wenyan says he's felt like it's been his mission ever since to help his family do that. That's an incredible story, Kaylee. We'll Continue to tell the story of Wenyan Gabriel, how he went from the Sudan through Egypt and ended up in New Hampshire and now in Lexington, Kentucky with a sixth-ranked team in the country. It's a four-point lead for UK. Jared Harper is just a freshman running the point for this Auburn team. And he's able to find Lang, who goes back rim on it. Wiley had it for a brief moment. Now Fox. Fox finds out a bio. And we got a blocking foul on Auburn, and that'll put Bam at the free throw line. Second personal on Lang. If you want to be a good transition team, it starts with your point guard. And head up, De'Aaron Fox, surveying the floor, reading the defense, nice little touch pass, leading your big man, right? Not just, not just leaving your big man out to dry, but leading him towards the basket, making him make an easy play. As few decisions as possible, you want the players on the fast break that you make the pass to to have to make. You don't want them to have to make a ton of decisions. And great job there by De'Aaron Fox with the touch pass. Bam Adebayo's got another coming his way. Freshman from Little Washington, North Carolina. Just getting better and better. I mean, you know, we, we've we've had Kentucky before earlier on in the season. Saw them before in preseason practice. And, you know, his improvement from month to month has been remarkable. His communication skills defensively, being an anchor down in the paint. He's very aware as a post defender. Bruce Pearl thought there was a chance Bam Adebayo might end up in an Auburn uniform. He visited Auburn on a recruiting trip. Also visited North Carolina State where his good friend Dennis Smith has been running the point. That one was in and out out of the hands of Harper. Briscoe pushes it. Too much for Bam. Take you back to before we got started out here today. Bruce Pearl on the floor at Rupp Arena. Hey Bam, you remember me? That's great. Adebayo was the North Carolina Gatorade Player of the Year. That's a pretty good class to be part of. Heron couldn't finish it. Guys like Jeff Capel, Antoine Jamison, Chris Paul. A guy named Michael Jordan. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Neek, James Worthy. The list goes on and on. And a big win for North Carolina today at home. That was the first ACC loss for Florida State. Mustafa Heron loses it. Briscoe first on the floor to try and cover it up. We've already had three of these here in the first half, Kara, and this is time the possession arrow points to Kentucky. Fifth turnover for Auburn. Dunnins will return. Five turnovers for teams shooting 56% from the floor, which has kept Auburn in this game. Nice back cut for Briscoe, and a blocking foul will go against Harper. And Isaiah Briscoe will go to the free throw line. You know, the question mark for this Kentucky team is at the four position. I mean, we know about their guards. The Aaron Fox, Malik Monk, Isaiah Briscoe, and... The season that, the, that those three guys have had, Bam is starting to come along and, and a force in the paint, but who at the four position is going to step up and, and give this team some consistent production, some consistent minutes? 
We're seeing Wenyan Gabriel with his activity. I like the way he's played so far this afternoon. But that's the big question for this Kentucky team moving forward is what do they get from that spot? Is it by committee? Is there one guy that, that grabs it and says, hey, this is mine. I'm, I'm going to be the guy that's going to give us some consistency. You see Derek Willis over there. He's a part of that committee right now trying to fill that spot. Matter of fact, they went pretty deep down the bench last time. We're going to push off by Smith. 35 feet from the hoop on Briscoe. And that's a second on LaRon Smith. Watch on the right side of your screen as Briscoe comes out on Smith. Yep. So they even played Michael Mulder at the four in their last game, two games ago against Arkansas. Briscoe got happy feet and gives it right back to Auburn. There's always a meaning behind the madness for John Calipari. Told us yesterday, he said, yeah, Michael Mulder provided our best option when the other guys got in foul trouble, but we also need to remind people that nothing is guaranteed when it comes to minutes. And if I can go to somebody else at your position, then you better perform. Brown will let it fly. Off the mark, and Briscoe's got it. Isaiah Briscoe finds Fox, spot up three, got it. Kentucky 10th in the country in assist, you see why. Now another takeaway. Fox, corner three, Mulder. Kentucky rolling again. This is what they do. All right, thanks back at Rupp Arena where Kentucky has started to pull away. They've hit nine of their last ten field goal attempts and an 11-point lead for the Cats. Great teamwork and chemistry. This is so much fun, isn't it? I mean, De'Aaron Fox, love his speed end-to-end, -end, one of the best in the country. And you see the nice pass to Michael Mulder. And how about this in terms of positive reinforcement? Malik Monk giving Michael Mulder some dap. Cal giving him some dap. Excited for the young man off of the bench getting an opportunity to make a play there. How much improvement have you seen from Michael Mulder since he first set up, stepped on campus? My arms can't stretch as far <laughs> wide. I, Tom, I watched, I watched the early practice last season, and I thought, I don't know if Michael Mulder will ever see the court. I mean, he just looked lost out on the basketball court. His first season, remember, junior college transfer, so last year was his first season here in Kentucky. And he has come a long way to now being able to be trusted with minutes in John Calipari's rotation. Adebayo picks up his dribble. They go back into the big fella working on McLemore. Got a little deep, but still converted. That's the first field goal for Bam Adebayo. Largest lead for Kentucky. Now at 13. And we get a trip on Wenyan Gabriel. It's his first personal foul. Tomorrow night, we'll have the 15th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Game on ESPN. 9 p.m. Eastern as the Bulls take on the Memphis Grizzlies. It's also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Speaking of the NBA, a lot of guys on the floor. They're going to make a lot of money playing the game at the next level. Able to break the press. And Harper has it again. And it's one of the reasons we've got so many scouts and GMs in the building tonight. They might double those numbers when Kansas comes to town in a couple of weeks. Harper's got seven. Fox, what speed. He just glides up the floor, and he earns a foul. He'll go to the free throw line. John Calipari knows something about getting guys to the league. How about $1.2 billion in contracts? That's more than the Cavaliers franchise is worth. That's with a B. B. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't have much to say after that, man. That is, look at that, 24 Kentucky players on the opening day roster this year. And, you know, the thing about these guys in the NBA is they're not just playing in the NBA, they're thriving. I mean, Marcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, John Wall, 
follow Anthony Towns with Kentucky almost doubling up the second best institution in Duke, putting players into the first round of the NBA draft. 21 since 2010. How about the fourth quarter Devin Booker had Thursday night? He had 28 points in the fourth quarter for the Suns, hit five threes. And by the way, when he came to campus, that wasn't a guy that many thought would leave early. Johnson got a half step on Briscoe. And that's the second on Kentucky's Briscoe. Well, every morning when John Calipari gets to his office, he has a printout, a sheet of the last night's games in the NBA, highlighted with what former Kentucky players did in those games. And so he'll look and see what some of his guys did and send texts, and that's his way of keeping up with what's going on in, in the NBA. Well, lately that is heavy reading. I mean, that's like War and Peace. Not the DJ War and Peace who's in the building tonight, but the book. DJ War and Peace is my guy. He's your guy. Yeah. He had you moving three games. <laughs> Lonnie Johnson has been in double figures each of the last two games for Auburn. He had 13 in their win Tuesday night against Kim Anderson's Missouri squad. There's your guy, DJ Warren Peace, on thought, the ones and twos. I thought it was Ben Bull Bullware from Clemson at first when I saw him, but then I realized it. Was, he had a parade today. Ben was busy today. <laughs> Mulder straight ahead three. And it's yanked down by TJ Dunnans. Brad Brownell's team, I think, was able to come back and win their game at home today following Dabo's parade. Dunnan's on Adebayo. A little floater's good. What does Auburn need to do offensively in this game? Yeah, I, I really think it starts with their defense, actually, Tom, and getting back, right? So offensively, what, what I would say to you is make shots so they can set their defense because every time it's been a miss or it's been a live ball turnover, Kentucky's been able to run at them. If they've been able to get their half-court defense set like that, they've had better results. John Calipari doesn't like that shot from Malik Monk. He said, if you're going to shoot that pull-up jumper with a hand in front of you, do it with six seconds left on the shot clock. He said, six seconds left. I don't care what you do. Just hit the rim. So Calipari coaching his young team. They're up by seven. Bruce Pearl's team back in this game. It's a seven-point difference thanks to a 7-1 Auburn run. You have to attack pressure with aggression, and that's what Dunnins does right here. And, you know, I thought he had a couple drives where he was out of control early, a couple early turnovers. But he's had some nice plays here down the stretch. You have to have confidence. You have to have confidence in what you do, and that's something that is not in short supply for T.J. Dunnins. Hawkins back on the floor for the Cats. Willis is as well, and he hits the long jumper. Pearl's team putting this little run together with a couple of key starters on the bench right now. Harper and Wiley. Dunnins leaves it short. Fox lost it on his way up. Hawkins is there. Now very often you see De'Aaron Fox go so fast that he loses control. Moore with the rebound. Ronnie Johnson running the point. Bryce Brown. And it's rebounded by Monk. He doesn't get a lot of those. Gonna hold on McLemore as Adebayo is posting him up. It's a second on the freshman from Warwick, Georgia. And Bam Adebayo will be at the free throw line. Isaac Humphreys will return. And Bruce Pearl's going to get a couple of subs in in a moment. Both sides here a little bit winded. Pace has been, been something fierce. Austin Wiley returns. Lang back on the floor for Auburn. If Bruce Pearl can keep this to single digits at the half, he would be thrilled. Back to 11 now. 
And we talked about it at the top, Tom, but they're doing all this without Danjel Purefoy, who's their best all-around player and would give them a little bit of a matchup advantage at that four position if he were playing. So this has been a solid first half to this point for all. Coach Pearl told us at shoot around today, he said, listen, I'm not worried about keeping it close. I want to play our style. There's no difference to me because I'd rather get beat by 30 and run what we run than changing what we do just to keep it respectful. Well, you, you want to you get better, and you want to use this as an opportunity to see, and give your players a, a chance to see what an elite offense, what an, what an elite defense is and going against, and he's getting that opportunity to, this afternoon. Uh, so Wiley with the foul. It's his second. Let's get back to the studio and check in with Doug Casarian. We have a tight now. So Dominic Hawkins at the free throw line for Kentucky coming out of the timeout. It's an 11 point Kentucky advantage and Hawkins is able to knock down one of two. Kentucky only five of 11 from the free throw line this afternoon. Spencer looking for it for Auburn. Nothing there. He's trying to post up at a bio up high. Spencer spins and hit the side of the backboard. A couple of guys get really deep on their post position. Now Fox, the Euro set, but they said one too many. <laughs> Jim Belton tells us that wasn't the Euro step. That was the Eastern Euro step. Seven turnover for the Cats. Auburn's turned it into a half dozen points. All right, Doug, thank you. While we were away, Dominic Hawkins hit a free throw, then Auburn turned it over, and now the Tigers trying to make something happen towards the end of the half, and a nice spin move by T.J. Dunnans. Kara, what's your reaction to 91 in a row for Gino and company? Well, first off, congratulations to Gino R.A.M. and the UConn Huskies, and I am surprised because the, the non-conference schedule that they played this year, I thought they would take at least one, maybe two losses. And the growth of this young team in the early part of the season, it, it's just remarkable. A testament to Gene R.M. and his coaching staff. Hawkins nearly gave it up. He gets it back and drills a three. So 91 consecutive wins for UConn's women's basketball team. If Gino keeps that up, he might be on the CalCast the second time this season. He might. He might be on the Cal. Have you listened to, to the CalCast? I have. I didn't listen to the to the Gino one, but I don't know if John Calipari really understands how a podcast works in this regard. <laughs> he said, you know, we cut a lot from that podcast. Gino talking about his background, how he got into this, his family background. Well, Cal, that's the definition of a podcast. You, you don't have to cut anything. Let it all play. <laughs> T.J. Lang has his third three of the game. Meanwhile, Kentucky has hit a, hit a season-high eight first-half threes. Monk. Oh, wow. And there's the danger of overplaying Kentucky anywhere on the floor. Dunnan's going one on one with Willis. Well, Willis struggles a lot when they switch like that, and he's having to go against the perimeter player. And Dunnan saw the matchup he liked and took advantage. Monk on the back cut, and he got bumped in the air. TJ Lang says, My bad, that's his third. Malik Monk and 
shoot it from deep. He's a top scorer in the SEC. He can also do this. Yeah, 0 to 100 and 0 to, what, 11 feet? I mean, as quick as anybody in terms of his vertical vertical jump. And Malik Monk, just a special player. And, you know, I've been so impressed with his efficiency. I mean, here's a guy that's, that's scoring at a tremendous clip, but he's shooting over 50% from the field and 40% from three. And guys know that he's the, the top scorer. And they know he's the lead dog, and he still has the ability to score with great proficiency. Alpha Romeo halftime report coming up. They'll talk about UConn's 91st consecutive win. When we come back in the second half, we'll talk about this team speed for Kentucky. Specifically, De'Aaron Fox versus John Wall. Well, Bruce has worked up quite a lather on that Auburn sideline now. His <laughs> team is down a dozen. He's watched Dunnans go to work. And a oh. follow jam by Horace Spencer. Ten-point deficit. Once again, single digits at the half. And it's a totally different feeling for Auburn in the visitors' locker room. Gabriel ill-advised, and it's back to the Tigers with 38 and a half left. Uh, he's excited. I mean, he has to be pleased with their effort. I mean, he certainly made some mistakes, some turnovers that, that led to some Kentucky runouts, but his guys have played hard. I think he's subbed very well in this first half in terms of keeping guys fresh, keeping a rotation of players out there. Somebody's got to come back and help Harper here. Harper finally gets it. He's only played 11 minutes in this first half. Auburn much better the second time around than Harper went out of the game in the first. Here come the trap Dunnins. He whips it over to Harper. Shot clock at eight. And a shuffle of the steps from Bryce Brown and a walk. Turnover number eight for Auburn. Bruce Pearl is incensed at Bryce Brown for not shooting the basketball. That's what he does. I mean, he's a guy that certainly has struggled with his shot in his sophomore campaign. Shot 37% from beyond the arc as a freshman, but it's a little bit hesitant there. Sometimes you, you know your numbers. You, you know what you're shooting, and that might have played into his hesitation. Shot clock off. Fox down the paint. It rolls home for the speedy freshman. Auburn to beat the buzzer, a little late from Brown, and wide. It's a 51-39 lead for Kentucky over Auburn. It's their 12th 50-point half this season for a team that scores 93 points a game. They've been past the century mark five times. Well, Bruce Pearl showing his energy on the Auburn sideline. Meanwhile, on the Kentucky sideline, John Calipari is with Kaylee Hartung. Coach, you guys allowed some points early. How did your team adjust? Well couple things offensively the ex the extra pass was there and we went throw turn it over walk the guys wide open yelling one more and we're not throwing it or we could throw it ahead no we throw it over the top out of bounds those are plays this team normally doesn't make again focus discipline uh, defensively, again, getting beat. One guy just driving the ball and shooting layups. Come on now. Either you take a charge or you have someone in that can stay in front of the guy. Uh, Auburn's playing good. They're competing. Your buddy Gino just got win number 91. Your reaction? I'm happy for him. I'm happy. Look, it could be 100. And I'll say this again. No movies because it's not believable. There's no movie written about 100 straight wins. You're crazy. Going to be at South Carolina, though. I got that schedule down. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Cal's on top of everything. Nothing gets by the Kentucky coach. Maybe not even Bruce Pearl as they go head to head for the 13th time. Cal's got eight wins against him. Let's get you back to Doug, Seth, and Lafonso in the studio. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN from inside Ruff Arena. Another full house for this SEC matchup as the Cats try to go to 5-0 and in Southeastern Conference play. 51-39 lead on Auburn at the half. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Kara Lawson. Kara, what would you like about Auburn's first half? I thought they were efficient on the offensive end. When they settled down the later stages of that first half, they were able to space Kentucky, drive, and get to the rim. 
Transition defense. That's got to be a key for them in stopping the ball. Kentucky has eight threes, but they're as a result of drive and kick opportunities. So got to keep those Kentucky guards in front if you're Auburn. It's a Kentucky team that can really move. They can get up and down the floor. Maybe one of the fastest in college basketball, especially with Darren Fox running the point. Time for our meaningful returns brought to you by TD Ameritrade. Speaking of speed, let's put De'Aaron Fox up against John Wall. Well, recent history in Kentucky, right? One of the fastest guys end-to-end. -end. That's NBA All-Star John Wall. And how about from his Kentucky days, collegiate days, him and De'Aaron Fox, 6.3 seconds. We've seen that in live action here today. Slicing that Auburn transition defense time and time again, giving his guys opportunities. A nice little feed there to Malik Monk for the three-point shot. Malik's two for four from beyond the arc. And then you've got the little middle game, the teardrop there right before the help defense comes over or Spencer whips at the air the Aaron Fox what a pleasure it is man speed it kills I think the roots said it best on the remix summer 87 summer premium unleaded the Aaron <laughs> Fox is premium unleaded we're by the way right on the average for total possessions for both Auburn and Kentucky Bruce Pearl said we're not gonna slow it down we're gonna play our game we're gonna be smart about it but we're not gonna change what we do and Auburn right there in terms of their average possessions, Kentucky and Auburn 1-2 in the SEC. Baseline drive will result in a whistle. Let's check in with Kaylee Hartung. Well, Tom, Bruce Pearl knew he was going to have to pick his poison playing against this Kentucky team. They dared De'Aaron Fox to beat them in that first half, and it turns out he did. So you'll see some adjustments here as he says Fox just doesn't have enough eyes on him in transition. Now, in that first half, they thought they could go under ball screens, but now he wants his point guards trying to press up, make him go over the top. Yes, that opens Bam up to the boards, but again, you got to pick your poison. They're willing to do that to see if they can stop Fox. Yeah, Bruce is fully aware that Kentucky knocked down eight threes in the first half. Monk a pair and Gabriel hit two. That was a third personal foul by the way on Isaiah Briscoe. That might open the door for Auburn as Mustafa Heron knocks down the second. Well it certainly will help them defensively. One less scoring threat on the floor on the perimeter. Dominique Hawkins does a pretty good job on the defensive end but certainly not the scoring threat that Isaiah Briscoe is on, on the offensive end of the floor. Quick look inside to Adebayo, and he walked with it. Yeah, they love that play early on to, to give Bam a, a good post look, a good post-up look. And you see, how do you beat Kentucky? And UCLA did it by outrunning them. Louisville did it by slowing it down. I would add two things on the end of that. Outrunning them with an elite offense, right? Yes. I mean, UCLA has an elite offense. Slowing it down with an elite defense. Louisville has an elite defense. So you can run with them, but if you don't have the horses to be able to do it and the guys that can put the basketball in the hole like UCLA has, whether it's Lonzo Ball or TJ Leaf, you're not going to have a ton of success. So you have to be elite in one area of the game to be able to do this against this Kentucky team. That was the second foul on Jared Harper. Wiley thought he was straight up. Kentucky is 201 and 3 under Cal. Went up by double digits at any time in the game, which is a remarkable number. Okay, so let's translate those two losses to SEC play. South Carolina comes in here a week from tonight. They have an elite defense. February 4th, Kentucky will go to Florida. They have an elite defense, although they do it a little bit differently. Both tops in the leagues in steals. Florida gambles more in the open court. South Carolina fills the passing lanes. Well, there's no question Kentucky's a favorite in, in, in every game that they play, I, I think, this season in the SEC. Um, it's a challenge to score with them, and, and, and even if you have an elite defense, their offense puts so much pressure on your defense to, to not necessarily pitch a shutout, but to be pretty darn good. And so that will be the challenge for Florida and South Carolina. Can they score enough to beat Kentucky if their defense is playing at a high level? De'Aaron Fox playing at a high level. The rebound, the push. Hawkins into Adebayo. Back out to Fox. And the dump for Gabriel maybe took a step. And then we got a foul on the floor on um, Mustafa Heron. That's his third. He is a third Auburn starter to have three personal fouls. See with a minute and a half to, into the second half. Moments ago, Isaiah Briscoe and John Calipari. John Calipari said something insightful, well, a lot of insightful stuff, anytime you talk with him. But talking yesterday about a player's confidence, he said anytime a coach gets on you and you drop your head, that's a bad sign. He said, now, we got some guys who will mutter under their breath to the coach. Like, come on, man, you don't know what you're talking about. Now, they do it under the breath to him, but it's his confidence, another confidence from Isaiah Briscoe. You're going to tap the Hall of Famer on the backside. 
Well, if you watch Kentucky practice, you'll see Isaiah Briscoe smirk a lot of the times yeah. when Cal is getting on him or getting on somebody else or laugh. I mean, laugh. Not in a disrespectful way, but it, he, he doesn't mind. He doesn't mind being coached. He doesn't mind that, that Cal is hard on him from time to time. And I'm sure John Calipari was just giving him some words of encouragement, picking up that third foul early in the second half, not being able to be on the court right now with his guys. Single digits on the shot clock. Dunnan drives and dishes. Shot clock at five now. The freshman Heron took a bump. We'll get the whistle. It'll be on Bam Adebayo. It's his second. So let's take a look. We are early on in Southeastern Conference play. Florida with a huge win today. Canyon Berry had another remarkable game. He had 27 points, including two four-point plays and a win at home against Georgia. Florida, I think, is the clear second best team in the SEC, at least to this point. South Carolina right behind them. And, and Kentucky, the odds on favor to win the, the conference again. You know, going back to that confidence thing, Tom, you know, I, I've always felt like as a player that there has to be a part of you that nobody can touch, that nobody can mess with, that a coach can't rattle, that, that is just your confidence. It stems from the work that you've put in and how good you think you are. Because if you allow people to to day to day mess with your confidence, then you're going to have an up and down career. That's the way it's going to be. So when Pat was talking about that yesterday, that resonated with me because I know as a player, that's what you think is, you know what, I'm going to have a certain level of confidence that I know what I'm doing out there when I play. I know your confidence grew year after year in your time in Knoxville, but did you ever smirk at Pat Summit? You want her backwards turned, yes. <laughs> Maybe a couple times my freshman year when she was facing me. That didn't go that didn't go so well. I can report back. That did not go well. Here's Dunnan. He's been aggressive and he's able to get to the window. He's in double figures. And some Hand-to-hand -hand inside, and Austin Wiley picks up his fourth. Austin Wiley is a really interesting story for Auburn. An early enrollee, he joined the team on December 16th, and Bruce Pearl said, listen, this kid does a lot of things well. We're going to see more and more early enrollees. He should be in the second half of his high school senior season, but post-defense is one area that he's behind. Defense is an area that uh, most freshmen are behind. I mean, I can't imagine coming into conference play and not having the preseason, not having the practices. I, I know how much the freshmen around college basketball have improved from having been in systems for three months, and Austin Wiley is trying to do it on the fly, so there's no question. He makes some mistakes on the defensive end, uh, particularly, and he's going to get better. He practiced two, all, all of two days before his Auburn debut. Meanwhile, Kentucky has its own early enrollee, but they don't expect to see any playing time for the newest cat this season. Here's that Abayo. Beautiful touch. He's got 10 now. Hamadou Diallo just joined this Kentucky program. We saw him in practice yesterday. What were your thoughts for a kid with his really first full workout with another six-ranked team in the country? You know, I was impressed. I, I certainly didn't have a high expectation level because he's in the same situation, as you mentioned, as Wiley, a high school guy coming into the Kentucky program. You, know, you have to learn the jargon. You have to learn You have to learn the, the scheme. You have to learn the plays. But I, I loved his athleticism. I, I loved his willingness to listen and learn. And uh, I, I loved how the rest of the team embraced him. It seemed like a lot of guys were out there trying to help him out and trying to get him up to speed as quickly as possible. That was the third personal foul on Jared Harper. T.J. Lang has three. Mustafa Heron has three. Austin Wiley has four. And we got a whistle going the other way against Kentucky. We're going to go with Bristol here. Michael Mulder commits his first personal foul. And Isaiah Briscoe returns playing with three. Anytime you watch Southeastern Conference basketball this season, you should be reminded you're watching the youngest league in all of college basketball. Mississippi State, Ben Hallam, the youngest team of basketball. Austin Wiley should be a high school senior, but he's playing in the SEC now. And so when we return, we'll address the question. We'll try to find an answer. Should I stay or should I go? And the impact these two players will have on their teams this season.
Hamadou Diallo, a early enrollee for the University of Kentucky. Saw him at practice yesterday. And Bruce Pearl has his own in Austin Wiley, who's playing for Auburn. Diallo won't be in uniform in most cases, but he will travel with the team. Meanwhile, Wiley had two practices before making his Auburn debut, and he's been a regular part of Bruce Pearl's rotation. He's started seven games in a row now. So this is something different. It's something new in college basketball. They've been doing it in college football for years where guys will forego their second semester, but they're not giving up high school football because the season is over, and they get in, time, in town in time not to play games, but to participate in the weight and strength weight strength and conditioning programs and then spring practice. This is different for basketball. Do you like this trend? Well, it's different in that they're also not being asked to play right away in football when they come, right? When they come in January, they have eight, nine months before they have to play. In Austin Wiley's case, I mean, he's playing right away. Um, you know, I don't know that this will become a trend. I mean, you're asking a, a young man to give up a lot. You're asking him to give up his senior season in basketball. You're asking him to give up potential. I mean, these two guys, in all likelihood, would have been in the McDonald's All-American game. You're asking him to give up all of those opportunities for a chance to come and, and practice, maybe not even play games. So I, I think it's an, an individual case-by-case -case basis. It was interesting. We had a split decision when we talked to Cal and, and, and Bruce Pearl. Cal didn't think it would become a trend. Bruce Pearl seemed to think that we may see more and more guys doing it. Lang with the back cut. It's pinned by Fox. And they're going to get Fox for a foul. That's his second. For more on Hamadou Diallo, let's check in with Kaylee. Well, Diallo in his first full work day with the Cats yesterday at practice, talking to associate head coach Kenny Payne, he was telling me how impressed he was with Diallo's instincts defensively. Contrast that with Bruce Pearl in saying that he sees his inexperience and his young team really come through on the defensive end. A great anecdote from Payne as he said one of the Kentucky big guys went up for a shot. Diallo got to the top of the square and blocked it. The team went nuts. He wouldn't tell me who that big guy was who got blocked by the uh, high school senior in his first day with the Cats. But this guy doing a lot to impress his teammates. And, Kaylee, he got a lot of help from his new yeah. teammates. Yeah, he did. I mean, they were going through just some shell pieces, and, you know, Bam Adebayo was on the offensive end, but he was instructing Diallo, who was on the defensive end, telling him where he should be and kind of putting his – his arm on him and pushing him out to where he should be because th there's a rhythm and there's a communication piece to this that's new and you know you talk all the time you, you mentioned football about a playbook and, and what you call things what what programs call things can be different and from high school to college and so those are the types of things that Diallo is going to have to pick up and try and pick up quickly but I think he'll add a lot to their practices if nothing else some really good competition here's Briscoe with the mid-range jumper you know it was funny I asked John Calipari, as we were talking to him after practice yesterday, I said, how does adding this kid help the program this year? And he was at a loss for words for a moment. He said, what well, doesn't help the program this year? It helps the kid, and it'll help the program next year when we're looking for leadership and guys with experience within the program. He said, but to be perfectly honest, the kid's not going to play. We don't want to play him. We, only, we will only play him if it's what's best for the kid. And for that to happen, Diallo will have to establish himself at practice and show that he's ready to play at this level. Otherwise, they're not going to do it. Adebayo went spilling to the floor, and that's going to be a foul on Auburn and Leron Smith, his third. Out of your screen, Adebayo oh, yeah. taken down. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be shooting free throws the rest of the way. Terry Ogles being Sean Casey trying to figure out when that foul occurred. And it'll put out a bio at the free throw line. Spencer took a shot. Second on Wenyon Gabriel. Derek Willis returns for Kentucky. Briscoe with the rebound. The push ahead to Monk. And Monk walked with it. Time to learn a little bit more about Wendy and Gabriel. Let's turn it to Chapter 2. Kaylee? 
But when Wenyan Gabriel was born in 1997 in South Sudan, it was in the middle of a civil war in the country. Now, just two weeks after he was born, his family sold everything they had and fled to Cairo, Egypt. They spent three years there in a refugee camp. The next move, with the help of the United Nations, to New Hampshire, where he grew up. There's a three from Dunnan. She's got 13, so that long and winding road for Wenyan Gabriel it ends up with him in Lexington, Kentucky. By the way, he didn't play AAU basketball. Didn't face this kind of competition. At least not relative to what his teammates have faced. Nice slide by Dunnan. He's got 15 now. At a bio, great position and a two-hand jam. It's a 50th dunk of the season for Bam Adebayo. He gets some high percentage looks, doesn't he? Well, he's he's fortunate enough to play with some some guys that command attention, and they look early post hits. His Dunnans is starting to heat up a little bit. I think a way to involve Bam more is in transition, early post hit right there before the defense can set up. Get him an opportunity. It's so hard to keep him out of his position. Don't let the defense load up. You know, T.J. Dunnans has done a good job of keeping Auburn within arm's length. You know, he's aggressive. He's attacked. He's, he's exposed some, some holes in that Kentucky defense, particularly at the rim. And he's put his head down and, and gotten to the rim. That help side has been late or unaware. That was a weak link in the UCLA game. T.J. Leaf finished with 17 for the Bruins. And John Calipari said our defense, especially on these straight line drives, this was non-existent that night. It's the only home loss of, this, loss of the season for Kentucky. In fact, they've won 45 out of 46 here at Rupp. Dunnans guarded by Fox. I don't think T.J. Dunnans is going to give it up. Fox tried to rip him from behind. Dunnans finishes off the window. 20. He's won off his career high. He's taken over in the second half. The six-point game thanks to a 10-2 run. Fox, little floater. And it's pulled down by Auburn. Tigers can make it a one-possession game. Dunnans gives it up. And Johnson got a bump from Fox. It's the third on Kentucky's point guard. But a great big Monday doubleheader for you on ESPN. We start in the ACC with the Tar Heels playing host of the Orange at 7 o'clock Eastern. Then at 9 o'clock, Kansas squares off with Iowa State. Both games streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Auburn has only won this building two times in their entire history. Man who coached him to both of those wins, Sonny Smith is courtside with the Auburn radio crew. He's got to like that move. Horace Spencer rolls it in. Well, what did we talk about with John Calipari about what is the challenge for his team? Do we have the discipline to play through the shot clock to execute like Disco does right there? That is what Auburn has been able to do. Get Kentucky's offense in a half-court setting, take them out of transition, which was something De'Aaron Fox was able to run wild in the first half in doing so. And in doing that, they're able now to, to have a fighting chance to defend them. Now, it doesn't hurt that they're making shots. When you make shots, that enables you to set up your defense. But that's what's kind of tilted this game back into the Auburn Tigers' favor here in the second half. So Ronnie Johnson at the free throw line now. Auburn has gone on this run, thanks in large part to T.J. Dunnans, who has 12 in the first eight minutes of the second half. They've done it with Jared Harper and Austin Wiley, among others, on the bench in foul trouble. Even Mustafa Heron, who has three, and is their leading scorer, hasn't been impactful in the second half. Got to make some free throws. Auburn has been abysmal at the free throw line today. 
Briscoe. Shot clock will go to single digits. Briscoe has six points tonight. Baseline drive. He's got it. So Briscoe has scored the last five to open it up for Kentucky. Heron, this should be a mismatch. And Adebayo still gets the block. Briscoe got fouled across the face by Horace Spencer. It's a first on Spencer. So both teams making some adjustments coming out of the half, and Isaiah Briscoe doing the same. Things start to go sideways for Kentucky. Who steps up? It's Briscoe. Nice little hesitation getting to the rim. He scored five straight. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy, proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. Well, John Calipari's coached a couple of players of the year, a couple of national freshmen of the year as well. Right now his catch lead 65 to 56. Four Final Fours under Cal in the national championship. And those aren't the only banners that hang here in Rupp. They have had some superstars in the history of this program. My good buddy John Pelfrey, Small Mashburn, Tony Delk with us at the SEC Network. And as you scan those jerseys, the one thing you don't see is all the superstars under John Calipari. To get your jersey retired here, you must be five years removed from concluding your playing career. But it stands to reason that very soon they're going to have to find another railing to hang those jerseys on. I would think Anthony Davis would be uh, right up there, right? National Player of the Year, led his team to a national championship. First pick in the draft. That'd be as automatic as you right? can get. Jared Harper back on the floor for Auburn. Harper drives. Got a bump from Humphreys. Meanwhile, Chuck Person has his number retired by Auburn. He was part of the team. That, one of two teams that came in here to knock off Kentucky in the history of this series between the Tigers and the Wildcats. Bruce Pearl does a little bit different with his coaching staff. Chuck handles a lot of the defensive calls, where Bruce will handle a lot of the offensive calls. It's one of my favorite NBA players of all time when I was growing up, the rifleman. Shouldn't he be coaching offense? That's always been my question. I, you know, a lot of coaches w want to give their assistant coaches opportunities to be well-rounded. And I know Chuck has has designs on being a head coach and running his own program one day. So I think it's good to have have a balanced approach to, to what you do as a group. He had 20 points back in their meeting in 1983. It was an eight-point Auburn win. They knocked up the sixth-ranked Cats. Also beat him here in 1988, knocking off Rex Chapman in Kentucky with a last-second shot from John Taylor. Corner three, Monk. Whoa, he can rise and fire. 15 now for the freshman. He gets so much elevation on his jump shot, it looks almost impossible to defend. Dunnett's nice hesitation. Beautiful move to the rim. He's been great, hasn't he? A career-high 22. Wow. And efficient. Briscoe. And that was designed by John Calipari just to let Isaiah Briscoe do his work. And his ability to drive. To be able to finish among the trees, I mean, it, it's as good as it gets in college basketball. I mean, Frank Mason is, has been great at it for Kansas. Isaiah Briscoe, in terms of his strength and his ability to finish through contact around size, is just remarkable. Briscoe 
whistled for the illegal screen. He put Lang on his backside. That is the fourth down, Briscoe. T.J. Dunn is doing seemingly whatever he wants on the floor. Well, he's been able to keep Auburn at arm's length. I mean, every time it's felt like Kentucky's going to pull away with this thing, get a double-digit lead and, and stretch it out even more, Dunnins has done a terrific job of just making individual plays. I mean, individual plays, one-on-one, -on -one, utilizing his size and his breakdown ability just to make – make shots for his team. He's been able to get to the rim. Kaylee, what are you hearing from the Kentucky bench and John Calipari about defending those drives? Well, Cal looked at his team almost quizzically during that last timeout saying, you're just letting them drive. You can't push up on them and allow them to go around you. you got to give them some ground and then cut them off. Meanwhile, on the other side, Kentucky has turned it up offensively now in the second half after a slow start. They've hit 7 of 14 overall. Auburn had it as close as four. Fox hangs and draws a whistle. It's a second on Horace Spencer. The many faces of John Calipari. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If he wasn't wearing a white shirt, yes. we might see some sweat, like, like like BP over there, okay? If he wasn't wearing or had, didn't have a button. Coaching is its own kind of sauna. Missed them both into Spencer's hands. See if Auburn has a run in him. Watching John Calipari is its own kind of theater. Dunnins has been remarkable in the second half. Set up Monk for the crossover. Monk recovered to block it. Eight on the shot clock. Heron steps through and he banks it in. Fox on the run to Hawkins. Adebayo pushed off. He sent Spencer sprawling. It's the third on Kentucky's big man. So on one side, John Calipari, the equally as animated Bruce Pearl. Mismatch. Heron. Got it! Big time three from the freshman. We've got a six point game. Monk. The answer. his fifth. Seven twenty-three remaining. Erupt. Dara Fox beside himself with frustration. He's done with 13 points. And the crowd started to come alive here at Rupp. Does Auburn have more magic in their hat? Let's check out our Wendy's Wooden Watch. Two of the best players in the SEC represented. Two of seven freshmen nationally on the midseason 25 watch list. You know, these two guys make up the backcourt that has to be considered for one of the best freshman backcourts in college basketball history. You look at their production today, but De'Aaron Fox picking up his fifth foul right here. Mustafa Heron drives to the basket, and he is not pleased at all. A little bit of a gamble to have Fox in there with four fouls, seven and a half minutes left in the ball game. They will now be without his services and drawing some high praise from our Chad Ford. This big board, Malik Monk ranked fourth, De'Aaron Fox ranked ninth, so two top ten picks projected 
in the NBA draft in 2017. We've talked about in the first half, five NBA GMs, almost 20 NBA scouts here in attendance to watch not only these guys, but the other freshmen in this game. Well, Fox will watch the rest of the game along with those GMs after fouling out. Mustafa Heron goes one of two from the line. He's the first five-star to sign in Auburn history. Neither team shooting the ball well from the free throw line. Auburn just four of 13. Kentucky 10 of 23. It stands to reason that somebody is going to lose this game at the free throw line today. Monk with Brown in front of him. John Calipari wondering where the whistle was. Door open for Auburn. Hawkins out of there with it. Here's Monk behind the back. Oh. Over his shoulder. Hawkins to jam. How good was that? Full speed. Malik Monk eludes the first defender. Nice little drop over the shoulder pass to Dominique Hawkins. That was a special play, and now we hear Rump. Now we hear they get it going, getting behind their team. Harper from deep. Auburn on the floor to get it. And it'll be over and back. And an Auburn turnover. 12th turnover tonight for the Tigers. We talked about leadership in the first half. And, and where does it come from from this Kentucky team when you have a team that has so much youth? And the player it comes from is Isaiah Briscoe. And he is now into the forefront not only as a leader, but by position. De'Aaron Fox is out. Five fouls. Who takes over the point guard position? It's Briscoe to help lead this team down the stretch. A reach in on Bryce Brown, who commits his second personal foul. Isaiah Briscoe in the first half only had three points. Took a seat on the bench 20 seconds into the second half of this third foul. He's still come alive since then. Monk has 19. So Briscoe out of the game for a moment. Mulder on the floor. They'll let Hawkins run the point. Monk's 10th 20-point game of the season. The lead's back to a dozen. This is a scrappy Auburn team. And that might sound disrespectful that they're not talented. They are also very talented, but we're showing... And we're seeing tonight, they've got the attitude of their head coach. They're not going anywhere. And another big one. Bryce Brown with his first bucket of the game. Wow, what a time for Bryce Brown to hit a shot. We talked about how he struggled from beyond the arc this season. That's a big-time play. Brown gambled, and he commits his third. That was so Brown. That's his third. Tonight at 11 Eastern, be sure to tune in to Sports Center Night with Kevin Connors and Nicole Briscoe. They'll have highlights and breakdowns from the Seahawks, Falcons, and Texans Patriots, and as well as the NBA, NHL, College Hoops, the Sony Open, previews of tomorrow's divisional games, and everything else from a Sports Pack Saturday. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. It's a lot going on in sports today. Great College Hoops Saturday. Incredible yeah, I, Saturday. Duke and Louisville. Louisville beat Duke in the ACI. I, I was wondering this as I was watching the game. So who who do Kentucky fans cheer for when Duke plays Louisville? Oh my goodness. Do what they is, cheer what are, what happens there? Uh, they cheer for a blackout. I think Kaylee knows the answer to this. Talking to a Kentucky fan before this game, he asked me what I thought of the outcome. He said, you know, we don't want anybody to win that one. <laughs> Pushing inside, and Wiley commits his fifth. So Bruce Pearl's starting center is done. Wiley with six points, and he's done. De'Aaron Fox fouled out at the 723 mark. Pearl's got a minute to decide who's going to replace Wiley. 
He's going to go with Spencer, and he wanted to pause a moment to give the officials a chance to think about it. Spencer had a good game against Missouri. Didn't miss a shot in the Tuesday night win in Columbia. Big time foul trouble for Auburn. Brown three, Harper three. Heron three. Oh, my goodness. Monk with an emphatic deuce. He's got 22. Five-minute mark. Heron lost it. Here comes Mulder. And one. And the third personal foul on Horace Spencer. Can we see this again? I mean, this was so... Now, you got to look away. You got to look away right after it happens. Look at this. Ah. I mean, his ability to rise and fire. And, you, you know, you play like that just gives confidence and energy and a little bit of juice to everyone else on the floor. And Mulder's able to finish that transition play and get the end one. But I feel like I, I, I feel good. You know, <laughs> I feel good over here when Malik Monk dumps like that. You know, Bruce Pearl doesn't feel good about it, but no. he spoke in reverential tones, in almost giddy excitement about the talent that's on this Kentucky team with us this morning, saying, I mean, this, let's appreciate what we have in front of us. You know, sometimes these Kentucky teams aren't appreciated. He said, we beat them last year. That wasn't a great Kentucky team. This is a great team, and they are fun to watch. They're great for the sport of college basketball. Uh, what the Aaron Fox and, and Malik Monk have been able to do uh, it, it's it's not normal and you know Kentucky has made a habit of great freshmen and people around college basketball think this is normal this is not normal to acclimate as quickly as they had to be able to be such high achievers uh, particularly on the offensive end of the floor for both of them I mean it's 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 remarkable what they're doing in their young careers Dunnans now has 23 so they're being judged each and every day by the fans in Big Blue Nation and by the scouts that watch them for the next level. They're also judging themselves, right, Kaylee? Tom, before the Vanderbilt game this past Tuesday, Sean Farnham and I asked Malik Monk, how would you grade yourself out to this point in the season? He said, I give myself a C. We said, what? Why? He said, because I'm not rebounding enough. You know, Cal has told him every game he thinks Malik Monk should be a double-double kind of guy. Those rebounding numbers have not yet followed to the place Monk and Coach Cal want them to be. Well, I'll give him an A for scoring. Only three times in SEC history has a freshman led the league in scoring. Chris Jackson scored 30 a game for Dale Brown and LSU in 89. Bernard King scored 26 in 75. And back when Georgia Tech was in the conference, Jim Nolan did it in 1946. But Cal's like that professor that you stay away from, man, because of those are the grades that you're that, that he's going to be giving out. I mean, I know that was Malik self-grading, but you, you talk about somebody that stays on his guys, that is never satisfied, that is always picking at them, that is always challenging them day to day in practice. How can I expose and give them something? that they need to work on and keep them on edge. And that's that's a part of his coaching genius. That That's that's what makes him a special coach. Well, it's easy to be comfortable, right? But how do you improve if you're never uncomfortable? And that's part of the development that each and every kid seems to go through when they get here. Spencer got hurt at a bio, adds to the insult. Spencer took a shot to the throat, and at a bio, jams it for his 15th point. And Malik Monk is just laughing out on the floor. You think they're having fun? Heron, mid-range. Monk lost his man. 
Gabriel on the glass. Gave it up just as he was being hogged tied by T.J. Dunnan who commits his third. Kentucky playing above the rim to the delight of Big Blue Nation and their very own teammates. How about the reaction from the Kentucky bench? Oh, this game got out of control in a hurry, and it's about the explosive athleticism of Malik Monk and company. The bench, those guys, they're loving it. Welcome back to Rupp Arena, Kentucky with the lead on Auburn with 320 remaining. We've told you the first two chapters of Wenyon Gabriel's story. His chapter written tonight is a great one in terms of rebounding. He's got 13. It's a new career high. For more on how he ended up in Lexington, let's go back to Kaylee. Well, Tom, we've told you about the heartbreak that Wenyon Gabriel's family experienced with the loss of his little sister. We told you about the journey he traveled to come to America from the South Sudan. This is a young man who takes a great sense of pride in where he's from. He hangs the flag of South Sudan in his dorm room, but also a young man who has a great sense of pressure that he puts on himself to take care of a family that has now made their way to America. Talking to associate head coach Kenny Payne before the game, he said he puts this incredible amount of pressure on himself, and as a result, his confidence wavers. But Payne will tell Gabriel throughout a game, tell me you're a king, because from where you came, you are a king. You know, when you great Gabriel, I love his approach. He, he works he works his butt off. I mean, he works before practice. He works after practice. He's a guy that, that has a good-looking shot but hasn't shot a great percentage from beyond the arc. He hit only four threes coming into today's game. Has two already this afternoon. Kentucky is looking for a fifth player. They're looking for a guy that will step up and say, you know what, I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to be someone you can depend on. And, Going on today's performance, it might be Wenyon Gabriel, the player moving forward, that locks that up. My favorite part of the story, and we've gotten through three chapters, is that there's more to be writ written for Wenyon Gabriel. Yes, much more. Yes. 16-point lead for Kentucky. Of all things, Wenyon Gabriel grew up a Duke fan. That's the only thing the Big Blue Nation doesn't like about Wenyon Gabriel. <laughs> Adebayo kicks it out. Adebayo and Gabriel were the first two Wildcats on the floor today. Monk lost it. Shot clock at one. Throws it up and throws it in. Is this kid having fun or what? Hey, Malik Monk, college basketball is not supposed to be this easy. <laughs> Tough angle for Dunnans. Gabriel with another rebound. 14th of the day. Well, Joe Lenardi has Kentucky as the number one seed in the NCAA tournament, the latest version of bracketology. They have a huge out-of-conference game coming when Kansas arrives at Rupp Arena in a couple weeks. But then the question is, who in the SEC can give them a run? Mulder takes a victory lap. Which team defensively matches up better with Kentucky? Florida or South Carolina? You know, I like South Carolina in terms of their connectivity on the defensive end of the floor, but I like that Florida has a bunch of different guys and some players with size and, and some different things that they could throw at. So, I don't know if that's considered a push or not, but I think each have have a, have a different strength against this Kentucky team. Talking to Bruce Pearl today and about the opportunity to press or not press Kentucky made me lean a little bit more towards South Carolina because Casey Hill and Florida will gamble in their full court press. And as Pearl pointed out, if you gamble, you get beat. It's a dunk the other way. Yep. So Mike White and company will have to decide what their game plan will be. We'll meet up with them twice. Three best teams in the league will all meet twice. By the way, South Carolina should be ranked coming into next week. There's some losses in the back end of the top 25, including Penn State knocking off number 24, Minnesota, today. Auburn got within four early stages of the second half when Briscoe was on the bench in foul trouble. He returned. Kentucky was able to pull away. And Malik Monk 
able to lead the way for Kentucky with a team high 24. Brown will spot up. What did we learn about Auburn today? I was impressed with Auburn. Did not have one of their best players in Daniel Purifoy, their power forward. And this is a team that's beaten Texas Tech. They've beaten Oklahoma. They've beaten UConn. They put in themselves pretty nicely. Kentucky ran away with it in the end, but impressed with Auburn as well. Darren Fox fouled out with seven minutes to go. It didn't seem to impact this Kentucky team because when Fox left, Monk took over. Monk finished with 12 points in the second half and a couple that got him out of your seat. Oh, man. Highlight variety. I mean, the explosiveness of Malik Monk and how quickly he's able to make just these highlight plays. A, a great performance, another great performance for the young freshman. So Kentucky goes to 5-0 and in SEC play. They'll be in Starkville to take on Mississippi State on Super Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Once again, our final, Kentucky over Auburn, 92-72. to Coming up next on ESPN Sports Center. Good night from Lexington.